Hey everybody, it's Rob here. We are getting a lot of new endgame systems in Diablo 4 and I want to talk a lot more detail here on the things we've learned so far. And I also went ahead and made quite a few calculations like see, uh, showing you like how much armor you will need on each of the uh, different tiers of the pit and we're also going to look at the new uber uber bosses. So we're starting here with the pit. This is basically the new rift system coming to the game. You can see here there's an obelisk in town and uh, you can access the pit with, um, I think it's called ruined shards that you find in the open world after you defeated Nightmare Dungeon 45. And then you will see this obelisk in town and you can interact with it. It starts with monster level 100 at tier 1. And Joe uh, basically confirmed that this is going to go at least until monster level 250. So this is going to go well beyond what we were used to in Upper 12 Zier. Uh, you can see here in the sheet that I'm going to be linking in the description, Upper 12 Zier used to be um, monster level 160. But now you can see here we're having the pit tier, which is in the B column. We're having the monster level. So you can see here in the chat here, it starts at monster level 100 and it's going up by one, or it's safe to assume it's going up by one monster level per pit tier. And um, on the D column here, we have the armor requirement to reach 85% uh, damage reduction. There's like a big calculator here behind it, but you can trust these numbers because like these are already confirmed, like what you need at like 100 and at uh, Nightmare Dungeon 100, which is like the 13.2K that has been floating around a lot here. Um, so you can kind of see that uh, this uh, pit uh, is gonna go like very deep and it's gonna get a very, very difficult at a certain level. So we can at least assume that he mentioned up to monster level 250. So we are looking here at this would be pit tier 151 when the monster level reaches 250, unless that scales differently at the end. But I don't think that's much, that's very likely, but we'll see. And uh, this has basically been confirmed by Joe. And here you would already need 20,000 armor to uh, basically reach the 85% damage reduction uh, that we're looking for. And I mean, on most classes, it could be easy to reach if you're just playing a Juggernaut plus uh, Disobedience role. Um, but yes, on some classes it'll definitely be harder to reach this uh, kind of stuff here. If I stack my Disobedience here real quick, you can see like we're already going... And yeah, my pet is killing them all. But we would be going uh, well beyond uh, 20k armor if we stack our Disobedience to the maximum amount. So this is just with uh, disobedience and not even armor roll, just like a, a bad uh, roll on the on the pants of disobedience plus juggernaut. Um, so you'll definitely be able to reach uh, pretty uh, high levels of, of armor that you're looking for in these like high tiers, especially with like bleed builds and stuff that keeps up uh, your disobedience. But yeah, I mean we don't know how deep it's gonna go, but like you can just like you know run this run this formula like even even further down and uh, who knows where it's gonna end right but like uh, at least it's gonna go very very crazy until a pit tier 151 which is then monster level 250 where you need 20k armor and yeah there is a lot of uh, cool rewards associated to it um, but first of all here you, you just add the, you enter the rift and you have a 10 minute timer here on the right side and the cool thing is, if you die here, unlike Abattoir of Zia, you can still keep playing. You just get a penalty of 30 seconds, similar to um, what we've been getting in uh, Diablo 3. So you can still continue playing, but if you don't manage to kill everything in the 10 minute time, you still get loot and you still get a reward, but you don't get the crafting mods for the master working process. Master working is part of the uh, crafting system. I already made a video that I'm going to link in the description about the master working. Um, but you basically need to defeat the Guardian, the Pit Guardian, in time to get the Masterwork materials from this new system. And you can kind of see um, the progress is actually pretty insane. Like you can see like when he kills one of these elites, like he gets like, I don't know, like almost 5% progress from one elite. So you don't really have to kill all too much to reach um, pretty high um, timer here and to get the progress bar to 100 to then summon the Guardian. So the, the dungeon is completely random and the monster type is completely random as well. That's what they said. And apparently you still have uh, pylons in here. So you probably can, can, can get a blast wave shrine. You can get the artillery shrines and stuff like that. And as you can see here, this blast wave shrine is carrying him pretty hard. Like he's almost doing no damage with his rogue, but the blast wave shrine kills every monster again. So you probably, if there's still shrine buff duration in the game, you probably still want to like get some shrine buff duration or get some get some buffs like dependent because like this is like a very short level and he already got i think two shrines 
So there's also, um, you know, like a floor two, just like in Rifts there, there is. And maybe you can also finish in, in one floor, we don't know. But when the Guardian spawns, there's another floor opening. And you can see here, it kind of looks like every floor at least has uh, one shrine because he gets another shrine right here. I'm not really a big fan of having all these shrines in there, but uh, they certainly like their RNG parts. Um, so yeah, we probably going to have these shrines in there, but maybe this is something we can give a feedback on on the PTR, which starts uh, in uh, just 10 days from now, basically, on uh, April 2nd. So you can see he's like kind of blitzing through this. I mean, this is the easiest tier of the pit. And as he gets to... 100% he gets a Guardian Slayer portal here so that he can enter and then he has six minutes to slay the Guardian So this is like where he's fighting the Guardian and there's also look you see this is like an echo of Lilith That appears and is provo it, it does this like swipe attack that Lilith usually does if you know the uber Lilith fight So sometimes uh, I think they said Elias or Lilith can appear to perform an attack that you really want to dodge because it's gonna do a lot of damage if you stay in there And then you have this boss that you have to kill. And after you defeat the boss in time, even if you don't defeat it in time, it drops you a bunch of legendaries. And if you defeat it in time, it also drops this chest that then drops um, a bunch of materials for the master working process. So you can see here, there's like a bunch of legendaries. These are supposed to be ancestral. There's also a Stygian stone. We will get to that in a second. This is what is needed to summon the tormented uber bosses, like the new version of uber Duriel and uber Andariel and all the other uber bosses. And then there's this mastery chest here, first of all. And this drops him uh, three materials. This is like the, the base version, the white material that is needed for the master working process. And the deeper and the higher levels you defeat in the pit, the better this loot gets. So it's probably, you know, like the first 50 levels, your chance of getting any legendary materials is pretty low. And then it gradually increases as you go deeper, deeper and deeper into the system. And the rewards keep scaling, like they confirmed this in the dev stream as well, that you basically are heavily incentivized to do the harder tiers of the pit in order to get the uh, Neturian material here, the legendary crafting mat that you will need uh, for the master work, as you can see here. So this is definitely uh, what you, what you want to do and uh, get down to it and try to beat the hardest tiers. And this is probably going to be most efficient in a group. And I really quickly wanted to talk about um, some potentials here, like group play. You know, this is basically the Rift system. And you guys, or some of you may remember how it works in Diablo 3, where you have like, uh, you know, you have supporter characters and, and DPS characters and stuff like that. So there is a potential to have, you know, like a group play, a group meta, where, you know, one guy is like, more pulling the monsters, another guy is more pull killing the monsters, maybe another guy is more like on the tanky side. We'll see. It didn't really happen all too much in Avatar of the Year because it kept out like you were just uh, 25 and 25 uh, in the end was a speed farm tier for the top builds. Like you've seen the Shred Druids doing this in under two minutes. Um, so basically just a speed run tier. And we'll see how the difficulty is going to be there for, um, for the solo player, but then also for groups. But I still expect that groups are probably going to be a plus 100% HP on every monster per player. So historically, group play in Abattoir of Zia has been rather tough. Um, and there's not really been, you know, all too much crazy synergy in the Diablo 4. We'll see if some sort of group play will evolve for this, because obviously it's going to be way easier um, to obtain these materials in a group, especially if you... We don't know if everybody needs the material, you know, to open the pit or if just one group member is enough. I mean, they're taking a very open approach to trading. So we now have legendaries and uniques tradable. But you see here, like you have like a requirement to uh, to join. Uh, you need to pay some, uh, you, see, you need to pay some material here. Uh, these uh, runic stones, uh, rune shards that you need to pay to enter. So. Who knows if everybody has to uh, has to enter with a rune shot or if just one guy spends the rune shot, similar to how it works with Uber Doriel and stuff. So yeah, we'll see. And then there's also the big question is, because we don't see it in this footage here, can you switch your gear? Let me see, he opened his inventory. And yeah, this is probably the Stygian stone or something. This is like the new material. But yeah, the question is, can you switch your gear and your Paragon? similar to uh, as we did in our 12 year or is this gonna be you know fully locked like in the gauntlet because else we could see 
you know, a lot of snapshotting happening again, especially um, with the way the boss fight works, where you may want an AOE focus build for the um, for the rift itself, and then you may want a single target build for the boss. And the, I think the the portal provides an excellent opportunity to just like fully switch your build. I mean, especially rogues are doing this because you have this like you know. Um, Pen shot that is really good in AoE, and then the barrage rock that's really good in single tire. And people in Avatar 12 Zero Days, if you remember, have been switching uh, their full build, their paragon, their skills, and even their items um, inside of the Avatar 12 Zero just to fight those blood seekers. And yeah, now we have a pure single target boss at the end. And I'm just afraid that we're gonna be fighting the boss, the single target boss, in the end for five minutes. So <laughs> we'll see what's gonna happen. I really hope snapshotting and gear swapping is not a thing, similar to the gauntlet. Uh, but we'll see in the PTR and we can maybe give some feedback if you are switching gear like in, in there and, and stuff like that. So we'll see how that's gonna how that's gonna turn out. And then we have the top builds potentially. I mean we will get the full patch note, so this will change. But right now the Hoda Bob is or Hoda Charge Bob is the gem on Bob, like is the strongest build by far. But they already confirmed there is a nerf coming to charge, there's a nerf coming to Hoda, and there's a nerf coming to the um, Banished Lord Talisman, to Tarbot's Will, and also to Unbridled Rage. So there's like five different nerfs coming for this build. So this is probably not going to be the top build. And they are buffing other builds like Double Swing, so we'll see how it's going to end up. Druid, I think Lightning Storm is looking very, very good right now. Necro, Infinimist, Rogue, the Pentra Barrage, especially if you can respec. And on Sork, I think uh, Blizzard Sork is going to... Um, perform pretty good first of all because it's the name of the company right it's blizzard sword for a blizzard company but also because they're buffing all the flat damage affixes they said uh, they want to like you know these like affixes like that spawn like a twister on your uh, dust devil on your barbarian or the affix that spawns like a blizzard and these ice sparks with, with like a flat damage percent this now is scaling with your weapon and it's like scaling better than before so there's probably a buff to the Blizzard Sword in here. And then there's also this new Frozen Orb Conjuration build where your Conjuration triggers Frozen Orb and your Frozen Orb triggers Conjuration. Especially in AoE scenario with Shatter could be pretty insane. But there's also a big, big lag potential here. If you guys remember how much the Ball Lightning Sword was lagging the server. And this might happen again. But yeah, we don't know for sure. We will see what's going to happen with that. And then, you know, at the end of this run, you're getting these stones. And I would assume that these are tradable. I mean, we have no confirmation of this. But it looks to me like this is just dropping on the ground like an, like an egg or a shard, like any normal material. So you see here, it has the same color. It doesn't have the color of a crafting material, but it has the color of a summoning material, which uh, goes to your inventory. And we've seen it here at the beginning. Um, that there is some strange material in his inventory. So this is the Stygian stone that you need to access. So this is this is the one, probably. Maybe, this is speculation. But this is probably the material that you need to summon the new tormented version of the uber bosses. Like, I'm just calling it the uber uber bosses. So this is basically a part of the new boss ladder. And they've shown this. There's a complete new boss coming, which is the uh, Uber and Daryl version. It's gonna have the same um, drop table as Duriel. And you need to, the mats from Zur and Beast and Ice to summon her. So this is just normal Uber version. And this, uh, there's also a small chance to drop the Zur materials in the new Helltide now that they're also changing as part of the endgame, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is like a Daryl fight, same job as Duriel, but then with these Stygian stones that you're uh, getting here from the, um, from the rift, from the, uh, from the pit, um, you can summon a harder version of all the uber bosses. And this harder version is gonna be monster level 200. So you might, actually let's put this here, uh, tormented uber boss level. So you might want to, you know, stack up some additional armor for this fight. And again, the sheet is going to be in the description. So you need 16k armor, probably, to have some good damage reduction versus these. Because these bosses are going to be level 200. And what you need to do to summon them, you need the Stygian Stones. And you also need the normal summoning materials, and probably more of them. And then, whenever you kill them the first time, so you have uber uber zir you have uber uber varshan or tormented whatever tormented greg tormented beast and ice tormented duriel tormented and Daryl. i'm not clear on the naming yet so you can get six uh 
you can summon six uber uber bosses in total and the first time you kill them and I assume this is account wide else people will just keep making new characters to kill them and get a guaranteed uh, resplendent spark again this is the material that you can use to craft uber uniques with so first time kill you always get the resplendent spark so you can get six resplendent sparks either per account or per character and that allows you to craft one and a half uber uniques already guaranteed and then on top of this, these uber uber bosses have a much higher loot table and they have higher chances for uniques and uber uniques. We don't exactly know how much, but um, their expectation has been risen that this is a significantly higher chance. So you know, this one is like 2% and then this one will probably be like, I don't know, like 20, maybe even 30% or something like that. It's just a guess, like we don't know. But uh, probably a significant, or maybe even like 10%, I don't know. Like I would say like maybe 10 to... 30% or something like a significantly higher chance So significantly is at least a couple of uh, multipliers on there. I would say so um, Yeah, it's gonna be looking pretty cool if you are looking to acquire uber uniques and now We already know that you can get some pretty crazy uber uniques with um, greater affixes So you can get some uh, pretty crazy stuff like a Shaco with more than 20% cooldown reduction and uh, things like that, hopefully. So um, you probably want to farm uh, not one Shaco, you probably want to farm a few Shakos or Grandfathers until you have one that is coming close to this, like, I don't know, 10,000 life or 20% cooldown reduction, right? Like you need the greater FX rolls. And I think the Tormented Uber version or the Uber Uber version is an excellent uh, solution to all this. So yeah, in general, I'm really excited for all the endgame stuff. Um, and we'll continue to test everything and uh, look into, you know, how high we can clear with our Barbarian or even other classes in the pit with all the changes that are coming. So we have a patch, uh, the full patch notes for the PTR expected to come out here like somewhere next week. Like I would think it's going to be like the 26th or something. And then the week later on the 2nd uh, April, we're going to get the PTR. So I'll probably make another updated video um, when we have the full patch notes about like, the class balance and the, we'll adjust the top builds that we will try uh, on the PTR. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. And yeah, it's looking uh, pretty cool for Diablo, especially like these like new zoomed out mode that we have here it makes the game look like even better than it was looking before. And in general, I'm pretty hyped about uh, all the new endgame stuff. And we are finally getting some actual challenging endgame. We're talking level 200, level 250 plus bosses and enemies. So well, that's gonna be quite a challenge and we are ready for it. So hope you enjoyed and uh, let's jump in together on April 2nd. See you there, GG. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day. So come and say hi.